Welcome back to the ProLworks channel. My name is John. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to cut a half blind lock joint, which is a great little joint for small drawers. Now, I had made a video about this some years back, and I wanted to revisit it and show you guys some of the tips and tricks on cutting this joint with thinner stock. The original video, I touched on using half inch stock. For this one, I wanna talk about using 3 8 inch and quarter inch material for even smaller drawers. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started with the joint, I wanna talk about your drawer material. So in the first video I did for this joint, I had half inch side material. And in this video, I wanna talk about three eighths of an inch and quarter inch. So right now I have some material here for a nine drawer apothecary chest. And then I also have the three drawers for the watch cabinet I'm working on now. Those are gonna have three eighths inch sides. And this is just some scrap that I'm gonna show you guys how to do this joint with quarter inch sides because uh, this is a little bit trickier because you don't have much room to work here because there's there's not much material to cut into. Uh, so uh, as far as drawer fronts are concerned, I like to keep that material between three eighths of an inch and a half inch thick. It does not have to be spot on on any of those dimensions. It doesn't have, doesn't have to be three eighths, seven sixteenths or a half. It doesn't have to be super perfect. Um, just whatever you can land on at the planer and get everything nice and consistent usually works out pretty well. The other thing I want to talk about is having extra material to make test cuts. Now this joint uh, relies on your fence being set up perfectly and it depends on the thickness of your blade and all that. So you want to have some extra material so you can make some test cuts and get that perfect fit for the joint. These are just off cuts from extra material I have from planing this stuff down. So when you go to lay out your rough lumber, add you know five, six inches to all of your pieces and you'll have some extra material that you can use for your test cuts. The last thing I want to talk about is the blade. Now this is the same blade I've been using for five years or so, making all these joints. I've never had it sharpened. I clean it every once in a while and it still works out really nice for me. Every once in a while I'll make some general rips with it just because I don't feel like swapping it out. But for the most part, I only use it for this joint. This is a, uh, how many teeth is this? 24 tooth uh, blade. And it's a full kerf, one eighth of an inch thick. And the most important part is that it has a flat bottom grind on it. Now that means that there's no um, bunny ears, alternating teeth, so that you get those little um, corners in your cuts when you don't make a, a through cut. So this will have a flat bottom grind similar to some dado blades and things like that. I'll have this linked below and it's a really good blade. Uh, Pretty affordable for what it is. And I don't think it's yellow anymore. I think it's silver and uncoated nowadays, but this is the blade. It's made by a company called Kempston. So, all right, let's bring you guys in closer and talk about fence setup. Off camera, I got this example joint cut just so I can kind of show you guys what I'm doing every step of the way. And this is the type of fit that I'm going for. It's not too loose, not too tight. Um, there's enough room in there for glue. And if I shake this a little bit, when there's no glue, it's not gonna come undone. So that's sort of what you're going for so that your glue ups are, are pretty smooth and not too hectic. Now there's gonna be a total of three cuts to get this joint cut. The first one is gonna be in your drawer front and that's just gonna be a through cut like this on the end grain. The second one is gonna be on your drawer side, and that's just gonna be another through cut with the end grain against the fence. And your third cut is gonna be back on the drawer front, and that's gonna to be to cut that inside tongue so that it fits into the joint. So there are gonna be two fence setups for this, so let's get started and talk about how we're gonna set up that fence. What I wanna do now is set the blade height. Now for this first cut on the drawer front, we want the, the blade height to be set to the thickness of our drawer sides. So if we have 3 8 inch material, we're gonna use the piece, butt it up against the blade and have it at 3 8 of an inch. But I want it to be slightly over the, the material. What that's gonna do is give us a slight overlap of the drawer front over the side, and we can flush that up a little bit later. So do keep that in mind if you have this you know, a 16th over, your drawer fronts are gonna get shrunk by a 16th on either side. So keep that in mind when you're cutting those to final length uh, and fitting into your cubbies. So I have that just slightly over and that's gonna be good for me. I'll lock that in place. And then we'll talk about the fence. Now the fence here has to be set the same distance from the blade as the blade is thick. So usually I just kind of stand over it and kind of set it by eye. But for the first time just now on that example joint, I used a setup bar here and it worked pretty good. So I don't know, maybe I should have been doing that the last five years. So you can kind of see that the, I'm moving the, the setup block back and forth and the blade's not moving. So I'm gonna kind of keep moving this fence over until it just, oh, so now it's kissing there 
and I'm moving the blade. So now I want to go back and back off a little bit because we want to have a little bit of room for glue and we want to have a little bit of room for that joint to just slide in and out. We don't want it to be super snug, like I said earlier. So that should be good. So what we'll do is make a test cut and see what happens with that. For this first cut here, I'm doing a drawer front. So the drawer fronts, you cut into the end grain, so the end grain faces down, and the drawer front faces out. I have a piece of tape on all my fronts, and I'll know that that faces out, and I'll try to stay as consistent as possible so I don't make a mistake. Another thing to keep in mind is if you have square drawer fronts, it's really easy to accidentally uh, rotate the piece and cut into the uh, top or bottom of the piece and that can kind of mess you up. I've done that one time before. It's simple enough to fix because you just have to cut a strip and fill it in but it's an annoying mistake so just try to make sure you uh, keep the end grain up and down for this cut. For these cuts I like to use a push block here and this push block is going to keep pressure against the fence and my right hand here is just going to slightly guide the piece through the saw blade. I'm not trying to put too much pressure uh, with my right hand here because I, I want to put most of the pressure with my left hand pushing against the fence and this left hand will sort of guide the piece through the saw blade as well so you kind of get comfortable and find what works for you but that's generally what I try to do is just sort of finesse it and not put too much pressure one way or the other. So I'll go ahead and make this first test cut and then we'll talk about the drawer side and see what that first test fit looks like. Alright so here's our first cut looks good. Now we have to make a test cut in the drawer side. So for the drawer side, obviously we can't make that cut uh, with the same blade height because it'll just cut all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this to just about halfway up the thickness of the drawer sides. You can kind of eyeball this. You can use a setup block again, whatever works for you. In this case, it needs to be 3 16 of an inch, but I just eyeballed it just now and that wor should work just fine. So I'll go ahead and use the push block again with the end grain against the fence this time, making what is a cross cut, and uh, we'll see what the test fit is like. We have the drawer front here and the drawer side here. We'll see what the fit is like. So it fits, but I would say it's a little loose you can see there's a slight gap. Uh, you probably can't see it on camera, but you can see how much movement there is um, when I move this drawer side. There's just a little bit too much play. A little bit of that play will go away when we cut this tongue and the joint fully seats. But let's go ahead and make an adjustment to the fence and uh, see if we can sneak up on a slightly better fit. So because our joint was too loose, that means we need to move the fence further away from the blade and make the tongue of those cuts a little bit thicker. Now, the gap in the cut is going to stay constant because that is created by the blade, which is not changing thickness. So we'll go ahead and unlock the fence, and we'll just ever so slightly tap that over and make another test cut. All right, I ended up making a few adjustments to the fence, and I think this is the best fit yet. This is the drawer front, and here's my side. And we'll go ahead and check that out. And that's... Um, a pretty good fit. I think it's a little bit snugger than the example joint I showed earlier, which I think is just fine. There's still enough room in, in, for glue in there. You can see how easy it, easily it slides, but it still takes a little bit of effort to put the joint together. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of the material for all of the drawers I have to make cut with this fence setting, and then after that we'll move on to the next step. I just got all the first cuts made in my drawer fronts, so now I can move on to cutting the sides. Something you want to consider here is which side of the board gets cut. You want to figure out, do I want this to be the front of my drawer, or this to be the front? There might be some defects or some grain you want to highlight. Whatever the case may be, this is the time to figure out that this is my front, this is my back, and just kind of get organized and figure out what you want to do. Also keep in mind, later down the road, when you end up cutting the uh, bottom groove in your drawers, for drawer bottoms, which I'm not really going to cover in this video, you do need to make sure that you have a left and a right. As soon as you cut uh, the bottom in there, 
that now becomes a left or right piece. And you just have to make sure you have the same amount of lefts as you do rights, because uh, you'll run into some issues if you don't. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get my blade height set. Like I said, it's gonna be just about a half of your material thickness here, and I'm gonna eyeball that, so uh, that should work out just fine, just eyeballing it. And again, I'm gonna cut all the three inch ones here, and then once I finish those, I'll readjust the blade again and cut the quarter inch ones, because those obviously require a different blade height. All right, so we have two of the three cuts made in all of our material now, and let's hop back over to our drawer fronts. And this is where we are with our drawer fronts. We just have a single through cut there, and we have two equal length, uh, I don't know, tongues of the, of the drawer front. And what we have to do is we have to take this inside one and chop off a portion of it. And what that's gonna do is allow the joint to fit into the side material here. Now, the amount of material we have to remove depends on how deep your cut was into the side. So I can't just say, you know, put a setup block here and go, go to town and, and get all your pieces cut. You're gonna have to sneak up on this, whether you use test cuts or like test pieces, or you can just sneak up on it with your actual uh, work pieces, which is what I usually do. Uh, usually by now I've run out of test pieces and haven't kept up with it, and I've just done this enough times that I feel comfortable uh, making the test cuts on my actual work pieces here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll set the fence uh, just so that it's just off of the blade, and that's what's a little bit different about this 3 inch material and the quarter inch material, you have to set the, the fence closer to the blade than you would if you're using half inch material. So let's go ahead and get that set up and we'll make some test cuts. Like I said, you're gonna have to move this fence in. So before you move this, make sure you've made all of your cuts on your drawer fronts for the first time and the drawer sides, because going back and readjusting the fence is just gonna throw things off. So make sure you have everything cut and organized before you adjust this. So I've already made sure of that. So let's go ahead and move this fence over. So I'll just go ahead and butt it up against the blade so that it's touching. And I'm gonna back off, I don't know, about a 16th or so, and that should be good. And then I'll lock that in place. I'll go ahead and make a cut and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Let's see what this looks like here. All right, you can see that it's fully seated here, but there's a slight, slight gap there. So what that means is we need to move our fence over to the right just a little bit, just by that amount. So what I'm gonna do is just unlock the fence, tap it over a smidge, just an extra small smidge, and uh, we'll see what that gives us. All right, so let's see what we got here. Go ahead and flush that up. And that looks dead on perfect. Both of these tongues here are fully seated and that's gonna make for a pretty good glue up and uh, everything should go smoothly from here on out, famous last words. Um, but anyways, that'll be the setting for my fence for all the rest of my 3 inch side drawers. After I finish all those, I'll go ahead and show you the uh, Biggest wild card, and that's the quarter inch side, so stay tuned. I just got all the 3 8 inch drawers finished up, and now I'm gonna move on to the quarter inch material here. So what I've done here is I've taped a piece of plywood to my fence. You can use clamps, you can do whatever you wanna to do to get some sort of sacrificial fence here because we're gonna to have to slightly dig into the fence here with this blade so that we can sneak up on the right fit for this quarter inch material. Now these are the actual uh, pieces that we're gonna be cutting. And what I'm gonna do is lower the blade and I'll give you a better view of this uh, little plywood fence in a second when I move the camera. But I'm gonna slide the fence just over 
that uh, blade there. I'm going to lock it in place. And then I'm going to turn the saw on. Like I said, I just need to raise the blade so that I slightly clear that inner tongue. Now what I'm going to do is make, some, make a cut here and see if that fits. And then if it doesn't fit, then I'll move the fence over to the right just like I did before. But what happens with this thinner stock here is that you really only generally need to take about an eighth inch off this inner tongue. And so what that means is either your fence has to be just touching your blade or slightly on it and that's going to damage your fence so that's why we're using a sacrificial one here so let me go ahead and get these cut and then we'll see what it looks like all right so it looks like we have a slight gap where the side meets the inside of the front there so you can actually kind of see through it there i'm going to go ahead and move my fence over to the right and uh, sneak up on this fit. All right, so I just adjusted the fence and I made that cut and let's see what this looks like. And uh, that's probably as good as it's gonna get. I, I apologize for not using a more contrasting wood. Actually, let's flip it around and and look at uh, the other side where there's some sapwood from this walnut. All right, try to focus here. Um, so you got a little bit of fuzzies here. You can't really see it that well, but it's a uh, pretty fully seated there and uh, I'm pleased with that. You can see there's not a ton of material when you're using the quarter inch stock here. There's not a ton of material for the glue. It can be a fragile joint, but when you're using quarter inch material, you're probably using really small drawers where they're low stress. They're not gonna be used a ton. So you can definitely get away with a joint like this on really small drawers. All right, that's about it for this video. I'm glad I finally made it because I get a question every now and again asking how to cut this joint on thinner material. So I hope it answered any questions you may have. If it didn't, please leave those questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to them as soon as possible. But like I said, I like to use this joint on pretty much all the drawers that I make. Anything under eight to seven inches tall, I'll use this joint. Anything bigger than that or deeper than you know 10 or 12 inch drawers, I'll opt for something else like dowels. But this gets the job done for most of the stuff that I make. I like using it because it's pretty simple to cut at the table saw with just a few cuts and a one, you know, one or two fence settings. And the other good part about it is that first part of the name, the half blind. So what that means is I can cut the grooves in the sides and the fronts and nothing's going to poke out the side, of the side or front of the piece as far as the grooves are concerned. Sometimes when you're using finger joints or regular butt joints or dovetails, you might have to make some stopped grooves. So that's why half blind dovetails are really good as well because you can cut those grooves without having to worry about cutting stopped grooves. Now, like I said, I'll leave a link to this blade in the description below. You don't necessarily have to use that one, but it's a pretty affordable blade and has lasted me a long time. You can use any flat bottom grind blade you'd like, and an eighth inch works good for this type of material. Now, if you want to bump up to three quarter inch material, which I haven't tried yet personally, I would bump up to a quarter inch dado stack because that just kind of works with the rule of threes of being a quarter inch versus three quarter inch thick material. So if you're cutting, you know, joinery in some Baltic birch plywood for shop, ca uh, shop drawers or things like that, I think a quarter inch dado stack would work perfect for this situation. Like I said, I still have some more work to do with these drawers, but the bulk of them are going towards a mini apothecary chest that I'm working on, which I won't be making a video on, but I will have some links to ones I've made in the past. And three of these drawers are going towards the watch cabinet that I've been working on lately. And so this is the third video in a series of videos that I'm making with respect to that watch cabinet. The first one was about uh, choosing my lumber and getting started milling it. The second was about pre-finishing the inside of the cabinet before gluing it up and this was the third one working on the drawers so I will have some more coming out as I progress in that project and if you want to see how things are going as they're progressing follow me on Instagram at Pearlworks thanks for watching